He's talking about suicide prevention, and this is a state capital of Pennsylvania. Ha <laughs> ha. I came on the perfect day, didn't I? Somebody in PA dies every 18 hours. I guess that's of suicide. 486 people in PA will die. This is interesting. I really, I was meant to be here, wasn't I? <laughs> suicide prevents more suffering. these pamphlets and I'll do a video later on for my channel. This is like really, really good for my channel, isn't it? <laughs> I'm like a real spectacle here at the state capitol. <laughs> I don't think suicide is a bad thing. I think it, it's it's often very necessary, and you know, it's the only way that we can um, release ourselves. Let's go around here, and see what they're talking about. And I'm not included, and they don't want me anymore, and I don't matter. We need to play palm with everybody. Acceptance. Second one is appreciation. People do things all the time, and how often do you say thank you? There's a woman who came here earlier today um, that I think, for those of you that have, that have worked at the state level here, too, that also you know very, very well, and Sherry Peter. Sherry Peter has been doing this work for years and years and years. And as she was walking out the door, she had to go back to work. <laughs> as she was walking out the door, I, I, I told her thank you, but I don't know if she understood what that Third is acknowledgement. Validation. We do things 
But do people recognize those things that are actually going to be done? Not thank you, everything's okay, but that, that, that sense of acknowledgement and validation. And I find that when people are struggling with And I don't believe that it's like mentally ill people who commit suicide. It's because life is so bad. The struggles that they live with are very, very difficult. And yet we don't always see it. And finally, the last one is affection and care. When's the last time you went and gave somebody a hug? I'm speaking as a psychologist. You know, there's a there's a real meaning to what this means to people. People come up sometimes and we're taught that we're not hug them. Really? It mattered to that person. Why is it that we're not going to accept that and acknowledge that on our own end? Make a difference. Show that you care about somebody. Help them give somebody a hug. Tell them they're important to you. Um, and the last thing I want to think about is just this concept of being human. I think so often, you know, I'm, again, I'm speaking sort of on the therapy side of things, is that there's this wall, this barrier that exists between humanity and the work that we do. And we sometimes confuse professionalism with this need to somehow be an object instead of being an actual human being. We can do a better job of training our young folks that are going into this field how to do that thing in a little bit better way. All of this ties into this fact that here we are, you know, wasting out quotes. You know, it's like I have to come up with a quote for today. And I started giving a talk um, at my own university where it occurred to me that there's a quote out there that probably all of you know. It's very much about this issue that we've been talking about. It reminds us that this has been a struggle for years and years and years. To be or not to be? It's the question, right? And the cool thing about it is there's folks standing in the back of the be the voice, right? Be kind. Be the one to is a slogan of the National Suicide Prevention. Be kind um, life and do reasons. not reproduce. So have, you know, be human. I would just implore upon you, just be you. And be the best you that you can be. Thank you. I just want to give a collective hug out to each and every one of you. And if you want, I'll give a hug to each and every person who stays in the aftermath because I actually love all of you all. Bullshit. Just for coming here today. Just for making a difference. Because you save lives by being here today. This is going to be broadcast over Facebook, over all kinds of pictures. YouTube. Hopefully, you some press out of this. But each and every one of you Only I am I'm here for a very different all reason. Our board members and all of people here from Prevent Suicide FBA and the multiple other tasks that are here today. We're here because of you. We're here to make a difference. You make a difference by being here today. So I'll get off my soapbox now and introduce our, uh, our last speaker. I would love to be a speaker. Uh, Brown. <laughs> I would really, really love to get up there on the podium and give my two cents. Since 2010, the Pennsylvania Adult Older Adults was a prevention coalition. In 2015, she was named co-chair of that organization, where she also served as chair of the fundraising and training committees. After the merger last year of the Adult Older Adults Suicide Prevention Coalition and the Pennsylvania Youth Suicide Prevention Initiative, Mary now serves as treasurer and is on the executive board for Prevent Suicide PA. She's currently employed with the Community Connections of Fairfield Jefferson County since 1998 and is currently the Crisis Program Specialist. Mary oversees the county delegates and two county crisis systems. I think the extent of crisis resolution is to lock people up in a padded cell and isolate them or drug them with um, sedatives. Things that people are doing outside of the scope uh, in the state of Pennsylvania as far as task forces is concerned.
Good afternoon. Um, as Govan said, I want to talk about interesting, task isn't it? Very, very interesting. Um, I see a couple of task forces here. Very interesting, is isn't Mr. Mr. J? Um, I try to keep a tally of how many we have in the state, and I'm up around 45 right now. At least 45 counties are covered. We have about 38 teams. So I think that's a great number, but it's not good enough. We have 67 counties. Why are we covering all 67 counties? So, and that's something that Prevent Suits FPA would love to see happen, hopefully in the next couple years. That'd be awesome. But, you know, we're, we're, it's where we're at right now. We have 45 counties that have task forces. Um, and I've been with my task force for over 10 years. I wouldn't trust a tax force. It is. It is a passion. If you don't have the passion, the authorities are there to keep you alive at any cost, even any if it means your further suffering. Whether that's locking you up, drugging you, keeping you away from your families. Don't trust anybody who wants to keep you alive if you are suffering because they are not empathetic and they don't care about your suffering. They only want to keep you alive because that is their job. They don't have empathy for you. They have empathy for themselves. Task forces are involved in conducting many of the local suicide prevention efforts. Could be trainings, could be different programs focused on suicide prevention and mental health. Several task forces have their own conferences, symposiums, um, maybe what's needed in their counties. Um, they also bring in national speakers. I just want to touch on what we did last year for a suicide prevention or issues at our conference. We brought in two very well known national speakers. One was Iris Morton, she's considered the godmother of survivor suicide loss, and also Dr. David James. He's a professor of psychology and co-director of clinical training at the Catholic University of America. And we are very excited for next year's conference. It will be May 1st and 2nd, so mark that in your calendars. It'll be back here in Harrisburg. So remember, May 1st and 2nd. I want to see everybody attend. And a little bit about our conference. We also offer a special breakout session just for task forces. Yeah. So it's a nice session to get to talk, talk about what we're doing, challenges, anything, successes. Anything. It's a nice time to meet and meet. Task forces offer trainings. We've heard talk about QPR, question was way refer. We've heard about mental health first aid. Another one that's out there is assist. Five suicide intervention skills that we offer for best suicide candidates and trainers that offer that to task forces. Um, another one for CIT, crisis intervention team training, that we have in my houses, and I know the other kind is out there. That's a special training, crisis intervention team training for law enforcement. Law enforcement is a very important piece when it comes to for a gun. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is a lock for a gun. <laughs> Wow. Maybe we just said shouldn't have so many guns available in the first place. With Prevent Suicide PA, we have master trainers for TPR. We have trained a lot of instructors in San Francisco. So we know there's a lot of instructors out there offering TPR to many individuals. And we know a lot of Pennsylvania residents have to Here we go. Let's prevent. Suicide. Let's just take a walk. <laughs> Laugh. Yeah. That's a lot of Pollyanna optimism, isn't it? Limit caffeine. <laughs> Ooh. Are you here to help or are you here to make fun of it? I'm here to help. Help promote anti natalism Look it up. Sponsoring over events. There's a, if you don't know Kevin Hines, who's going to suicide for the event, it's 
a documentary that he has um, offered to the general population. Um, he has brought this documentary to pretty much anyone in the state. You can have it at your local theater, use it as a fundraiser. We don't know Kevin and I, but he is a gentleman that um, attempted suicide, but that's not a cool game bridge. And he has turned his life around, and he's also spearheading a movement for open healing. I thought it said Jane Horry. <laughs> Jane Lots of collectibles here. Lots of information to read. Um, yes, 17 minutes so far of information to read on suicide prevention. And um, I'm not going to agree or buy into any of it. It's it's hogwash. These these people, they just have an agenda. They have a job. Um, maybe they lost somebody in their lives to suicide, but but that doesn't mean that that person was not legitimately um, suffering and in need um, of putting an end to their life. Because nobody can feel another person's torment or dissatisfaction or pain. I've seen many, many YouTube videos on the chronic pain that people have, and apparently suicide among elders is an, an epidemic, and it's growing. So you cannot, you cannot put yourself in someone else's shoes. And sometimes I think suicide prevention is probably the most cruelest thing that you could do. I'm just gonna walk around the corner here and see what other kind of literature or what other kind of posters they have. Four hundred and eighty six people in Pennsylvania. Oh, let's go around the corner. Let's go around the corner. Oh, this is organ transplant. <laughs> I thought it was suicide prevention. And, um, yeah, I mean, why give an organ, um, you know, to prolong life? I realize that some people do want to live, but, um, I mean, it, it just prolongs life. But 
I have actually offered to give one of my kidneys before. And that was very sincere because if somebody really, really wanted to go on and to live and they were so happy and their loved one was going to die, um, yeah, I would be willing to give someone um, a part of me to extend their lives. What is blocked organ donations? And he's an organ, he's a transplant recipient. I'm celebrating 18 and a half years with a heart transplant. Really? Yes. You know, David Crosby, he has a liver transplant. Yeah, yeah. I saw him in Carnegie. Oh. So what does blocked organ do donations mean? Each county has its own county coroner. Okay, in Pennsylvania. Okay. okay, each county has its own coroner. And the coroner has the final say. <laughs> because every death has got to be reported to the coroner's office. Every death has to be reported to the coroner's office. And consequently, if there's a, an investigation as to the cause of death, and ultimately an autopsy, the coroner may elect to claim the, the body and, and deny recovery of organs. But do they do that? Is, is that in the coroner's best interest? Well, we're saying no. <laughs> we're saying, you know, if it's a headshot, why can't we recover organs? <clears throat> right. But more importantly is we want the coroner or somebody from the coroner's office to physically go and see the donor at the hospital who's there on, on machines because this person is brain dead. Okay? Oh, I see. And that's the way that you're going to be an organ donor. Is oh. We're going to do and so, so these were blocked donations. Yes. Are... These were organ donors that could have donated organs but couldn't because the coroner said no. And we but said, so oh, he makes a decision from an office or... Yes, it's, he may never see this individual. So the coroner may never see the person blocking the organ donations. So they said the, the numbers of um, organ donations that were possible that he, a, a coroner blocked. Well, this is something new for me to learn as well. <laughs> yeah. Your vote to my daughter's life. And we're just saying... Hey, so she's waiting for a heart at this moment? Yes. Yes. She's on the list, waiting for a donor. I spent three months at the University of Penn Hospital waiting for an organ donor. Wow. Yes. You had a bad and, heart. Yes. I had two previous heart attacks. First one was three stints. Two years later was five mm. bypasses. So, two years, so two you, years later. So you wanted to go on, did you? Well. You wanted to go keep keep living. Yes. Hey, I was, I, I, even to this day, I just... What do I have to do to pay back? Well, I can never pay back, but I can pay forward. Okay. And that's why I do this. It's saying, hey, whatever you believe in an afterlife. How old was your donor's heart? My donor was 44, and I was 50. So my... my you got a head. You got a few years. You, you got a... Uh... And even to this day, my transplant cardiologist says when I die, it will not be heart-related. That's how good the heart is that I have now. So. So why did the person die, do you know? Automobile accident. Oh, automobile Head injury. Myself and six other people benefited from the main door. Wow. So my big kick now is so, donors. Oh. You got two kidneys. You donate one. Yeah, I, I even offered to go to donate a kidney. I did. Get it checked out. Put on the list and they'll take it. Oh, you get you get on a list, huh? Yes. Well, the thing is, you got to be thoroughly checked out. I have some conditions for donating my kidney, though. Um, some such person, as. such as the person cannot ever reproduce. That is my condition. Okay, because you may end up with somebody who has gone in years right beyond the age of reproducing. There you go. It's still like me wants to live. I was fifty. Yeah. And he wasn't ready to throw in the towel. Very interesting. You see? I love, you know, I love education, and this is education. You, this you, is you information. Never, you're never too old to donate. Okay. And what we try to do now is to match up age-wise the organ with the recipient. So that, the, in my case, I wouldn't get a 21-year-old heart. Let's give a 21-year-old heart to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. Is there a place around to plug? Is there plugs anywhere? 
uh, any outlets. Be, oh, do you have a bag? Do you have like some kind of bag? Like, no, a, like a giant eagle bag? No. Okay. But the gentleman behind me, standing at the speaker, he does, he's got the speaker in it. He'll tell you if this plugs are The guy that's speaking? No, the guy in the screen shirt. Right here? Yes. He, he has. Works for the he does all this stuff in the hotel. Uh, he would know if he's Okay. I'm about to run out of battery. This really sucks. I didn't expect. Is this like once a year? Oh, no, this is ongoing every day. Okay. <laughs> you mean the suicide prevention is oh, every. No, no. But the suicide prevention, they have some legislation that they're trying to get passed. Oh, legislation. Oh, and that's why they're in there. Oh, there you go. They're trying to get legislation passed. So, and the pink is for breast cancer, right? The yes, pink fountain? Yeah. Um, October is breast cancer month. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. yeah. I didn't know. Is it ever, is the fountain always in another color, a different color? Uh, yes, because we had a blue and green back in... Uh, Earth Day. Uh, no, back in April for Donate Life Month. Donate life. You mean this? Yes. Donate. So on, on the middle of October, or middle of April, okay. I think it was April 15th, my, my anniversary. Very interesting. So, well, thank you for your volunteer yes. efforts. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're very... Um, you're very believable, and you have a heart for a felt mission to promote I'm, I'm organ donation. Uh, again, I'm, I'm the example that says organ donors do save lives. Okay. Save my life. Right. And I, I agree. I agree. It makes a lot of people happy. Yeah. And I especially agree that for younger people, Providing them with an organ helps them to buy some time. However, <laughs> it prolongs suffering, and that is a fact. Um, organ donation pr promotes and prolongs suffering. So I was really, really lucky to come to this presentation and... <laughs> I can't wa wait to rewatch it because my energy is spent filming this, um, these talks and these speakers. But it's all about legislation. It's all about politics, isn't it? Everything is political. Natalism is very political. So thank you for watching my video. And looks like looks like the speeches are over. And looks like I was here for a purpose. Looks like. Die Antinatalist um, was here at the very right moment. So <laughs> I need to plug in my plug in my cell phone here for a minute. And so thank you very much. Please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you liked what you what you saw. Thank you for watching.